Um, okay, cool. So I thought today to do a little tutorial on Max. Um, not very complex technique that I'm going to use, techniques that I'm going to use. Um, I haven't used Max in ages. Um, I used to use it loads and I uh, was working on a couple of projects recently where I wanted to use Max and became quite inspired again to make music with it. So here we are. Um, I'm looking to create just um, to show you how to create very simple generative sequences. Um, so we're not going to look at sound design. We're just going to look at generating um, kind of MIDI notes, I suppose, uh, randomly probability uh, way to create kind of a generative uh, soundscape. Um, I'm also going to use some, um, I'm also going to use um, an, a Max for Live, an M4L uh, instrument, which is great. I love Max and the Ableton integration and using Max for Live instruments solely in Max is fantastic. Um, and also you can use VSTs as well. So I'm going to do a little bit like that. Um, okay, first off, I'm just going to create a toggle um, and then I'm going to create an easy DAC. Um, oh. Uh, an EZ deck, um, and that is just going to turn my audio in and uh, on and off like this. Uh, next step is I'm going to come to my Finder, and I'm going to use this Max for Live instrument. I'm just going to click and drag and drop that in. It is P underscore four L version two, uh, and this is an, um, a, a version of Mutable Instruments Plat. Um, and uh, it's open source, the module, the software is open source. And so many people have been making uh, software versions of it. Uh, this particular version is great. I've only just come across it. Um, I was using another version, uh, another different version by someone else. However, I'm actually now on an M1 Mac Mini. And so the previous version didn't work. And so I had to find a new version. Um, if you do want to uh, find out more about this particular version, here we go. Uh, this is where I got it. It's ringtone.tools. If you look on Gumroad, um, yes. Um, and you can donate to this guy because the instrument's pretty cool. I'm not going to talk very much about the instrument other than the fact that I'm going to be using it to make some sounds. Um, okay, make some sounds. So if I right click on this and go to or open AMXD help, I'll get some help files talking about how to use this. I'm just going to go into instrument and I'm literally just going to copy uh, this. Um, I'm going to copy that and bring that into here. Uh, and this is the keyboard and it's using a little sub patcher to kind of play stuff. If I drag that, that goes into the right for the most inlet. And now I need to bring that to my audio and there's a left channel and then there's a right channel. And now if I turn it on um, and then press some keys. We should get some noise. Now the key slider object, which is this, obviously if I press it down the bottom, it goes uh, a softer velocity. Whereas if I hit it at the top, I get a a louder velocity, which is quite nice. Um, I'm going to actually change the model type to something else. Uh, to up. Yeah, that's cool for now, and then we'll we'll mess around with that. Um, okay, so what I want to do is generate uh, some random notes to play, um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up message, and then I'm going to give it a list of pictures. So I'm just going to go 60, 65 and 67. Uh, so 60 is middle C. So I'm just going to be in this kind of uh, C major kind of scale. You could choose any selection of notes. What I want to do is randomly choose one of these. Uh, there's many methods you can do it. I find the easiest way is to use a tool called ZL Scramble. And what Scramble will do is take this list and scramble it up. And so if I do this and then hit it, you can see the list is in a different order every time I click on it. Now, um, I only want one of these and which to choose. Well, why not just use a zl.slice1 uh, to take out that first entry. And then if I go here, we can see, uh, here we go. Bang, I'm just going to get a random one of those each time. So if I pop this into here now and then bring this down a bit, I can do this. Um, I'm just going to turn the sustain down. 
Brilliant. And turn the decay up. I also want to turn that to poly. There we go. Um, Platz is monophonic, and I think that's why we're getting some of the notes kind of cutting off because the envelope was still open from the previous one um, or something like that, the previous voice note. Um, uh, hence, there we go. We can kind of put it into poly here, which is quite nice. Um, we can change the decay to get lengthen the kind of note there. Uh, okay, this is great. Uh, what I want to do now, though, is use um, a, a VST. Um, so I'm just going to hold, actually, let's create the VST object first. Um, and I want to create a message called plug. And that's going to open uh, open the VST. And I'm going to create another message. And that's going to be open, I think. Yep. And then I can, once I've chosen the plugin, I can uh, open it to have a look at it. So I'm just going to go to plug. I'm going to choose Valhalla Supermassive. Uh, this is a free VST, free reverb VST. Um, I really like it. I think it's really cool. Um, I'm just going to go to reverbs and then ooh, I, no, I'll choose large C beams. That sounds cool. And then there we go. And then I'm going to hold down Alt and uh, left click, left click and drag. Oh, shoot. I'm going to left click and drag the there to select these. I'm going to pop, pop them into the VST. And then I'm going to go from VST into my easy deck. There we go. And hopefully when I press a note, there we go. There we go. I've got this kind of lovely long reverb, which is nice. Uh, okay, cool. Let's just bring that down now. Okay, so now I want a method of triggering these rather than just me clicking on them. So I'm going to use a tempo. So I'm going to create a tempo object, and I'm just going to go for like a really slow tempo. Uh, let's go for 46 beats per minute. That sounds pretty good. And so the tempo object uh, will output numbers. Uh, I think by default it's 0 to 15, uh, which is quite nice. Um, and so, yeah, so I get 16 steps, basically. Um, and so what I'm going to do is just make like a simple kind of step sequencer. So I'm going to create a new object, and that is going to be a matrix control. A matrix control is just like a grid of these buttons that you can press, which is quite cool. Now I just want one row. So I'm going to come over here to the inspector, make sure I'm an all at the top, and then find number of rows and make that one. I've got 16 steps, so I'm going to go 16. And then I've got 16 steps here. Brilliant. There we go. So this is going to be kind of when I'm going to trigger one of these. Now, because this outputs a number, uh, also, I can use the number from here to reference the index position of the matrix control. Uh, to do that, I want to do get column like this and then do that. And then I'm going to pass the number, um, it prepends it with get column, and then I get something. Now, the output should be in the right inlet here. It should be all zeros because I've got no things. Um, and then hopefully, there we go. You can see it's turning to one every time it reads from a column, uh, which is cool. So now what I want to do is uh, create a cell object to look for that one and create a bang. And then I can bang that. And then I come over here, do that. And then hopefully I've got a simple sequence. Very nice. And it's just going to do its thing. Uh, which is good. Uh, cool. Okay, so I'm going to use just I'm going to duplicate like this and make more versions with different sounds on it, just so I can get this kind of overlapping sound. So I'm just going to select uh, this part and I'm going to zoom out actually, and then I'm going to hold down Alt and I'm going to oh shoot, I'm going to hold, I'm going to undo that. I'm going to hold down the Alt key and then I'm going to create a duplicate here. Brilliant. And I'm just going to connect all this up like this, which is nice. Uh, and then let's just bring that over here so I can just quickly pop this in. Uh, okay, so this time let's choose some different numbers. Uh, some, uh, yeah, let's choose some other numbers on top of this, I think. So let's use 62 and 64. And then uh, let's have a few of these. There we go. I'm going to make. Again, take the sustain down and turn it to poly again. There we go. 
Uh, that's cool. Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to up it an octave. So I'm just going to go plus 12. I'm just going to go plus it 12 to the number. And I need to take that from ZL slice because that's our final kind of pitch. There you go, cool. So I've kind of got this uh, middle octave, then an octave higher. Um, and now, okay, let's do this again. I'm just going to select everything here, and then it's going to create a duplicate. And I'll shove this duplicate just down there, and I'll zoom out. Brilliant, okay, so it's getting a bit more complex now, and you can hear all these things happening, which is great. Oh, don't want to do that. I want to add that to here to get column. And let's go for less here. Uh, and then I also want this to go to my... Just shift this kind of over there, out of the way. This is when things get really messy. Uh, okay, oh, that's good, that's happening. Um, and then zoom in, I <laughs> can't see. Brilliant, there we go. Uh, brilliant, and then take that to the VST as well. Uh, this one, I'm gonna make it lower. So instead of plus 12, I'm gonna go minus 12. And I'm gonna... Uh, take some notes from this so it's not exactly the same. I'm going to take the 67 out. I could make it slower. Uh, so let's go like, I don't know, 32. Let's try that out. See what that sounds like. It might be a bit too slow. Let's see what it sounds like a little bit higher. Let's go for like 83. few things you can do there. Um, one last thing, let's create, um, I like, the patterns are fine, um, you could kind of randomly generate patterns if you wanted, um, however what I want to do is have kind of a level of probability that uh, passes a certain amount of notes through um, and that kind of thins out a sequence which is pretty good and then you can change the level of probability to do that. The easiest way to do that is um, Every time we uh, get a note, every time we read uh, one of these get columns up here, um, we can uh, seed a random number. So I'm just going to delete that. And we can seed a random number. Let's do random 100. And so we're going to get a random number here. And now I can say, OK, create a new object. And then say, if that number is less than 50, so I'm going to get 50%. If that number is less than 50, then the, the, the kind of 
comparative operator will output um, a one if uh, this is if it is less than fifty, um, if it resolves as less than fifty, if not output a zero, and then I can do another cell one there. And so um, if I just chuck a, a message on there and push that through here, turn this on. We're only going to get a note. when that drops below 50. Okay, so I'm gonna do the same, I'm just gonna follow suit. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing here. Uh, I'm gonna delete that, and I'm just gonna copy this from here. Um, copy this over, uh, I don't need that extra cell one. Uh, that's fine, just delete that. Um, and so this is a really nice technique just to thin things out, um, which is cool, and I can put that on here, and then here we go. last one uh, do it for down here as well and then I think we'll call that um, uh, okay just delete it. I haven't run out of space but I can't bother to stretch everything down but I'll repeat the process see the random number if it's less than 50 boom there we go cool um, I'm just gonna make the tempo a little bit slower let's go for like 61 let's see what this sounds like Cool, so there's lots more you can do. This particular Max for Live um, instrument has lots of uh, LFOs, rootable LFOs, which is so cool, really advanced, lots of added features uh, to the immutable instruments plats, which is amazing. So, um, you know, if you do like that sound, then this is a real instrument for you. Uh, yeah, so it's just very simple. Uh, we can modulate things, we could change up patterns, we could change up some of these percentages, we could turn some of these instruments on and off um, over time. So obviously, the deeper you go, uh, the more kind of generative it can be. But this is just a really nice, simple overview on how to create a simple generative pattern um, by thinning out notes and just choosing a, choosing random notes from a list, um, which is very simple to do. And you could, you know, another thing is you could get it kind of jumping up an octave over time or down an octave. Again, you could randomly uh, seed a multiplier to multiply, you know, what you're plussing 24, 12, minus 24, etc. So there's lots to do there. Um, hopefully, uh, that might this might be of interest to you if you're getting started with creating generative stuff um, uh, because Max is really powerful for that and there's some beautiful Max for Live instruments so uh, do test some of those out. Okay, I'll leave it there.